And so here's, here's something that happens if you're not a very popular kid. So let's say four kids are playing jacks. Good enough. I don't think kids play jacks anymore, but whatever. If they were playing jacks, they were sitting there playing jacks, and when you play jacks, you bounce a ball and you pick up a jack, and if you manage that, and the ball. If you manage that, then you drop the ball and you pick up two jacks and you grab the ball and you keep going up to like eight jacks or whatever. So now another kid wants to play jacks, and we'll say this is a relatively popular kid. And so the kid sidles up to the group that's playing and sits down, because they're all sitting down, and then watches, and then maybe starts making jack playing motions or a couple of comments about how the jack game is going, and then maybe the other kids don't have to disrupt what they're doing very much, and they can kind of open the circle and let that kid scoot in, and then he gets to or she gets to play jacks too. Whereas a kid that doesn't, and that often doesn't happen, even if it's a popular kid, sometimes the little group that's already formed won't open and let them in. You've been at cocktail parties. It's exactly the same thing, right? It's exactly the same thing. So you're supposed to hang around the edge of the conversation, and maybe if you've got something that isn't too stupid to say, you can <laughs> offer it, and maybe they let you in, right? So, okay, so now if you're not very social, what you do is you stand out there, and you don't notice what the hell's going on, and you don't start to match your body to what's happening, and maybe you say, I don't want to play jacks. That's a stupid game. Let's go do something else, in which case the kids are not happy with you, and you're unpopular. And that's that. You're stuck with it. Because if you've got that by the time you're four, about the other kids are going to leave you so far in the dust, you're never going to catch up. Okay, so, so what, have, what have we concluded from that? We might conclude that um, people play games. There's lots of different games. Um, there's lots of different playable games. There might even be an infinite number of playable games. There's a lot of non-playable games. Those are the ones that aren't any fun. And there's a lot of interactions that aren't games. Okay, so we can all accept that. And then we've added to that the observation or the presupposition that the ability to play games is a prerequisite for being socialized, so being able to operate together with people, and that that operation has elements of competition and elements of cooperation. Reasonable? And then you might say, well, everything people do communally has a game-like aspect. And you might say, well, that's actually why kids like to play games. Because kids play games because games are a simplified analog of life. And if you get good at playing games, well, what happens is the games you play become increasingly complex and more and more real-world-like until they're actually indistinguishable from acting in the world. But they're, even then, they're still games in a sense because they could, the rules could be different. But then what? The rules could be different. But then you might think, well, are there things that couldn't be different? And yeah, there are some things. It's going to be cooperative. It's going to be competitive. There's going to be rules. Everybody needs to agree on the rules. People have to want to play. This is something else Piaget observed. It's bloody brilliant. He thought, well, how could you decide if one game is better than another? And that's a moral, let's say that's a moral claim in a sense, okay? But he wanted to narrow it down so that it was possible that it could be answered. And what he said was, okay, well, imagine you have group A that are attempting to attain a goal and group B that are attempting to attain a goal. Both groups have agreed that attaining the goal is valuable. We don't have to argue about the value of the goal. We've settled that. Okay, now we're going to make a further assumption, which is all things considered, getting towards the goal with less effort, more enjoyment, and less trouble would be better. Okay, you have to take that as a given, because it might not be. Sometimes something difficult is better. But Well, then you might say, okay... Would people working voluntarily or involuntarily be more likely to reach that goal with less misery, faster, and more effectively? And Piaget's answer was, if you can get people to play the game voluntarily, you don't have to waste effort on enforcement. No one kicks back, so the system is going to be more efficient across time. Now that's, that's smart. Because he's got, a, he's got a way of conceptualizing what might constitute a better system. Now, it's grounded in subjective experience to some degree, less misery, more enjoyment. Um, but there's also a way of measuring it, which is it's also more efficient, you know, or it does what it's supposed to do with less noise and grief, less cost, let's say, something like that. So that's, that's pretty smart. Okay, so then let's, let's make another, well, hmm, how old do you think kids' games are? Like, and I don't know what's happened to kids in recent years because they're their culture in some ways has been seriously disrupted by television and computers. But you guys are a lot younger than me. Did you play hide-and-go-seek? Okay. Do you know Ring Around the Rosie? 
You know that. Do you know what that is? You don't know Ring Around the Rosie. How many people don't know that, that Ring Around the Rosie, pocket full of posies, hasha, hasha, we all fall down? Okay, how many know that? Okay, it's an English nursery rhyme. It's about the play. It's about the black play, by the way. And so that piece of doggerel, that piece of rhyme, has been around, transmitted by the oral culture of children since the time of the black play. And so a lot of children's tradition is an oral tradition, and a lot of the games that children play are passed along by children. You know, adults might also teach them, but kids learn how to play hide-and-go-seek. And how many of you play tag? Right, Ever, anyone never play tag? Right, so everyone plays tag. What, how would you conceptualize tag if you were a biologist? What do you think children are doing? Well, they're hunting. Right, they're chasing things down, obviously. They're chasing things down. Now, hide-and-go-seek, well, that's a tougher one, but it's certainly exploration. They're exploring a landscape, right? And they're matching wits against one another, but... And they're also trying to see if, you know, do people like you enough to actually find you, which is a <laughs> helpful thing to know if you're four years old. So, anyways, children pass these games down across, let's say, across the centuries. Um, and maybe tag is one of those games that you wouldn't even have to pass down. Children might just invent it spontaneously with every generation. Because like, you can more or less play tag with a dog. You know, I mean, the dog doesn't quite get it. But, but, <laughs> but it's close. Okay, so, so there are some games that are, that are enjoyable enough so that they're, they're either transmitted and everyone learns them very rapidly, or they're, they're so close to our nature that we can just reinvent them. And tag, I think, is the, the classic example of that. So, so that's interesting, too, because what it means is that there are certain types of competitive and cooperative behavior. Those are elementary moral systems that are, they look like they're integral to our nature. Now, you could even say they're built right in, or you could say... They're so close to built-in that it doesn't take much of an introduction to the rules of the game before everybody's pretty happy with it. And you, you see this with a lot of things. You play peekaboo with a baby. Okay, so what are the rules? What are the rules of peekaboo? What's that? You cover your eyes. You cover your eyes. Yeah, okay, so that's right. So you go like this. Okay, then what's the next rule? You your That's right, you reveal your eyes. You don't just sit there like this. <laughs> now, you know, you can play a trick on a baby if you want. And babies will laugh about this sort of thing, which is really, I think, really quite amazing. The baby's laugh is something remarkable to me. So you can go like this, and then like this, and then like this. And then like this. And then you can do this, and the baby will laugh. That's, that's a little variation, eh? Or you can go like this. <laughs> right, and then the baby, well, even that'll even make you guys laugh, so that's, that's good. You can see how, how deeply rooted this is. So, you know, but eventually, what will the baby do? It, it'll grab your hands, right, pull them down, because you're breaking the damn rules. And the baby knows the rules, even though you've never established any rules. And you can get the rules going with about five reps, right? You say, okay, this. Maybe you, no one's ever played peekaboo with the baby. It figured, the baby figures it out right away. This, this. And then you vary that. Maybe do that, that baby thinks that's a hell of a good joke, you know, because he went up instead of down. And so it's variations within this rule-bound theme. It's kind of like musical in a sense, right? It's variations within the theme. Now, what you don't do is go, <laughs> because the baby, that'll just short it right out, right? You know? So you don't do that unless you're, you know, <laughs> unless, you, unless you have an evil street in you. So there's, there's certainly ways of violating the baby's expectations. And you, what the baby will do if you do that is startle, and they startle with their whole bodies, and then look at you, and then probably they'll burst into tears. But some babies will just laugh like mad if something like that happens, and you can find those babies all over YouTube, right? Because, you know, you get the baby that the mother sneezes, and the baby has a fit laughing for like 10 minutes, you know? So, but it's quite interesting.